So this past week has been very cold. Our sap has stopped flowing. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to build a new barrel stove um, evaporator. I'm gonna use this kit that I got from US Stoves. It's the BSK 2000 uh, barrel stove kit. We're gonna turn this 55 gallon drum into a barrel evaporator. And hopefully it'll be a more efficient uh, way of doing our maple syrup. Uh, we're very happy with the fire pit method that we use. Um, but once we get to the new farm, we won't obviously have that fire pit and I want to have a little bit more portable option. And eventually if we do build some type of a uh, sugar shack, uh, we can place this stove in there. So um, we're going to get to laying this out and get to start cutting uh, these pieces in. Um, it comes with everything you need. It comes with the legs, comes with the door, comes with the uh, chimney fitting. Uh, we're going to use our existing sap pans um, that are really just warming pans uh, that we bought from a uh, restaurant store online. So uh, we're going to lay this thing out. We're going to start cutting and getting it put together. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a center line in my barrel. I want to make sure my door is um, vertical and everything. And I'm going to actually want this smaller plug here um, to be at the bottom because I may use that at some point for an air uh, intake. So I'm going to mark between the center between these two uh, bungs in the barrel. I did measure to make sure they were um, actually in the center because they um, not necessarily are going to be that way. So um, let me get this marked out. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure my barrel is level and I want to put a vertical line down the length of the barrel and that way I can make sure that down at the bottom uh, there where my stovepipe outlet will be is going to be level and I can make sure where I'm putting my sap pans is going to be level. my door lined up on here. Pretty much going to center it uh, between these two um, bungs in, her bar in the barrel. I might go a little bit higher towards the top one just because there's a kind of a curved section in here but you mark the cutout for the inside. I'm also going to mark my holes. mark where these vent holes are. So I joined, these are my vent openings, the two outer ends. I gave a little clearance and I joined these lines. So this is going to be my cutout. Now I'm going to mark where my stove pipe's going to go. I'll get my feet mounted and then we'll start cutting everything out. I'm going to get this barrel laying down the way it's supposed to be. isn't necessarily where my feet are going to be, but I want to mark where the stovepipe is going to be. My garage floor is more level this way than this way. Garage floor is usually pitched, so I want to make sure this is level. I did find my center line was actually a little bit off, so I adjusted that. I'm going to put my feet four inches from the end of the barrel. mark those holes. <laughs> so you could do this just as easily with a grinder uh, or a jigsaw, but if you have a plasma cutter, you might as well use it. So I've got the opening cut for my door. I'm gonna mount the feet now, so I'm gonna drill those holes. That way I can stand it up. It'll be a little bit easier to cut the opening for the stovepipe. Finally got some nice warm sun out.
we get the rest of our holes drilled. So I'm gonna do a rough assembly now, just put a couple screws in everything. So these are the two pans that we use on our fire pit. Um, the only problem is, is that these pans do taper. So when I cut the opening in the top of this barrel, I want to taper that opening also so that these pans slide in there tightly. Uh, I don't want a lot of heat to be able to leak out. I'm also going to have to overlap these lips on here because I don't have enough horizontal room um, to really play with. I'm going to try to leave this little center section in there to see how tight it is. I might have to reinforce that. I may end up actually taking it out and just putting a flat piece across. I got to see really once I get these uh, cut in uh, to this barrel. So I've got to do a little bit of uh, laying out on this, a little bit of calculation. I'm going to mark out all those things. I don't think you want to watch me figuring all that out. So I'll get it all marked out. We'll show it to you at that point and then we'll get it cut out. Okay, I laid out my lines. Uh, I just kind of laid it out square, and I know I've got a taper, um, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Um, so I'm going to kind of do that by eye. It's hard to do that on this curve, especially with this rib in the middle. And this rib actually isn't perfectly aligned with the rim, so it's a little bit uh, funky there. But I'm just going to cut these with the grinder because I want a nice smooth cut. I'm going to cut it all the way down to where the bottom of my pan is going to be. I'm going to cut across about an inch above that because I'm going to fold a lip that gives me extra support for the pan. I'm going to use these, this tool here that I have and I'm going to bend that lip over. Okay, let's give it a test fit. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'm going to clean these edges up a little bit, but it actually fits nice. So I'm actually very happy the way that first pan fits in there. Um, Taper's not perfect and everything, but there's very little gaps in there, so I think it's going to uh, function pretty, pretty well. So um, we're going to take and we're going to get the second one cut out. That's going to be a little bit trickier because I do need these two to overlap because I don't want to interfere with my stove pipe in the back. So I'm going to get that laid out. We'll get that one in, and then I think we'll be ready to paint it.
so I've got it fitted together. I got both pins on top. A um, little bit of tweaking. Um, could have been a little bit better fit, but I'm satisfied with it. I think it's uh, going to work well enough. So we're going to get it disassembled. I'm going to paint it up, and then uh, once it dries tomorrow, we're going to give it a test fire, and we'll do some uh, put some water in there, and we'll see how it boils. Well, good morning. It is the next day. My stove has dried. There's a few spots that I might touch up on and give it a little bit of a, uh, extra coating of paint. Um, but I am ready to assemble it now. I'm going to get all these pieces on and then we're going to give it a test fire. Now for the feet, I'm going to actually reattach those. I'm going to run the bolts from the inside out. I actually took the, um, the bolt that came with it and I'm going to put a washer on it. And I'm going to put those in from the inside out and bolt them on that way because I don't want the end of this bolt to interfere with the fire bricks I'm going to put on the inside. So we're all set up back here by where our fire pit is. This is where we normally would boil our sap down, but um, we set up right out in front, front of that. Um, I did remove the O-rings from this top plug and from that bottom plug because those will melt once this heats up. Um, I did remove the bottom plug completely because I'll use that to uh, blow air in with my uh, battery leaf blower to uh, help the fire. But uh, we're going to get some kindling in this and uh, we're going to start it up and see what she does. I did line the inside with fire bricks. This is what I have. I'm probably going to put another layer of fire bricks up here, but these are just placed in. I think that'll help uh, to retain a lot of the heat in here. stove pipe that he got which is just snap together stuff it's already come apart just from the mild heat of the fire um, really not a fan of this pipe I'm gonna get myself a solid piece of pipe um, I'll get this back together the best I can but so so far I'm happy with the way it's burning um, 
Draft is good. I've only got one piece of stove pipe on it because the other one fell apart. Um, but um, stove seems to be operating pretty well. We're going to see how long it takes to boil. It's actually not a real cold day out, so it's not a, a great um, comparison to what we did um, the last couple weeks with uh, boiling on the fire pit. But uh, we'll take a look and see. And uh, if this can get this boiling pretty good, I think. Uh, it might be a success. We're definitely going to use it next weekend uh, when we boil down some sap. So uh, we'll have a better comparison then. But uh, so far, I'm happy with the way it's operating. So we finally got the water to start boiling in this barrel stove evaporator. It took about an hour um, for it to get to that point. I'm not sure that the way I have it set up right now that it's more efficient than our fire pit. Our fire pit has a lot of thermal mass in it. I think what I'm going to do here is I am going to build a grate to go in here so I can raise that fire up higher. Um, that should make it a little bit more efficient. We're going to add a few more fire bricks into there so when we do boil our sap next weekend, hopefully we'll have uh, kind of a comparable result to see how this does as opposed to the way we were doing it before. We've got high hopes for it. We hope it's going to be a uh, good alternative for us. So um, if you've used one of these before and you've figured out ways to make it more efficient, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you like today's video, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we certainly would appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Um, but once again, as always here on Sunny Side Up Farm, until next time, we hope all your days are sunny side up.